it's been a while <laughs> i decided today i needed to sit down and just like talk because a lot of people actually have been asking me for like updated makeup routine which i'm more than happy to do for you all but i also decided let's go ahead and do a little throwback to a girl talk like advice get right with me if you are new here you might not know that i used to do a bunch of girl talks when i was younger but i had no business giving advice because i was not a doctor or nothing i just had google by my side <laughs> i decided let's put a little spin on it and i want some of you guys specific advice questions that you left me on my spam account before we do anything i actually need to like put my contacts in i'm going to be linking all my makeup stuff and what i use in this video down below in the description box i'm not wearing this the whole time my hair is just currently not done before we get into this video today i wanted to remind you guys that i still have t-shirts and totes and crewnecks and hoodies available on shop everything that i am currently selling on my store will be on the screen so if you're interested in any of that definitely check it out while it's available because it is selling out fast so make sure you check it out once again at shop if you got some already love you the most but if you haven't already go ahead and check it out for me and yeah let's continue with the video sorry i need to wet my beauty blender <laughs> well, i usually start out my routine with just a moisturizer i usually use the eye cream all over my face by belift because it's so super like hydrating and moisturizing and i think it's just really easy to use but i know the more moisturize your skin looks um the better or the more moisturized your skin is with product the better your makeup's gonna come out so i think it's really important to start with that and i also have sunscreen on under this yep y'all should know this hygiene routine posted it like a week ago from today i believe so yep the first thing i'm gonna start doing is actually gelling up my brows i use the edge booster stronghold water-based pomade and just an edge brush because i like my brows to look a little bit more fluffy what i just like to do is flick up my eyebrow hair starting from the front all the way down to the tails just so they're at their full like max capacity they look really big and bushy y'all have to stop texting me there's like a really big difference between when i gel them up and then when i don't they just look a little bit more like to life if that makes sense and i really just like to do the kind of shape that i want with these depending on the day i usually just do a couple hairs up in the front and then i also like to just you know completely gel down the tails because i have curly eyebrows and if you have curly eyebrows you already know <laughs> the struggle that comes with it when it comes to doing your brows this is the only thing that i know that has personally kept my eyebrows from curling and just setting in a way that i don't want to so yeah i live and die by this method it's really easy really just you know cheap now that my brows are kind of brushed down i'm actually going to leave them for a different part of my face because i have to wait for the gel to actually dry and i don't have a fan or anything to do so so we're just gonna go to a different part of our face i'm actually about to go in with two primers these are both elf putty primers one is poreless that i put on my nose and then the other is luminous that i put on the rest of my face so while i do that i'm gonna go ahead and start answering you guys' questions that you left for me on my spam account um one of the questions being should i feel bad for cutting off most of my friends for my mental health i feel like this is a good question to start out with because i feel like people kind of feel like their friends are entitled to them despite their mental health you know like being at risk or like not doing as well but if you're doing something to improve your mental health i'm all for it i just feel like the way that you do it should be thought about if you're thinking of doing something especially when other people are affected because i mean from like based off what you asked these are your friends like you've probably known them for a while so maybe you should just say hey y'all i'm taking a step back if i'm not communicating with y'all then let's try to improve my mental health and my personal mental because people some might take that offensively but there's only so much you can do and i feel like you should at least give them like a little bit of warning i'm all for just ghosting and saying fuck these people like i'm not doing this but if you're gonna go out with somebody you should go out on good terms in my opinion especially if you're able to control that but if you don't want to do that of course like i understand but you know them better than i do so i can only just tell you so much coming from somebody who's actually done that when they were a lot younger it's very hard the first couple weeks when you do so if you're feeling lonely with friends you're probably going to feel a little bit more lonely if not a lot more lonely after you get rid of those friendships and cut those ties because you're not really going to have anybody have backup for people you're going to have communication with because once you get rid of those friends it's like well what I'm gonna do now you know what I'm saying I'm gonna go on with concealer today I'm gonna use the Tarte Shape Tape in the shade 22B light beige and then I low-key want to go in with this Fenty Beauty Pro Concealer shade 
160 just on my inner corners just to brighten them up a little bit i only use this on rare occasion when i feel like i look really tired and it's one of those days we're gonna be using both concealers because these eye bags babe, although they are genetic concealer combo usually knocks both of them out have you ever felt like your standards were too high if you have how did you deal with it i turned 20 this month and although i turned 20 this month i don't have much dating experience i've only been in a few relationships in my entire life and quite frankly as i'm turning 20 i noticed that standards weren't ever too high I basically just asked for like bare minimum stuff and then when that was kind of dealt with and just seen you know done I, I was just like okay we're happy up from here but as I got older I have started developing kind of standards in my relationships so a little bit more higher standards in my relationships which i feel like is normal and i feel like a lot of people are like well you have to learn to know like what you like outside of relationships as you get older you can learn what you like and what you don't like in relationships and have that person tweak that in relationships because that's just not everybody is accustomed to or wants to learn about what they like and don't like outside of relationships i do think outside of relationship like development is very important but i look like i'm going ham with the concealer but i promise you i'm not just the wait till i blend okay we're gonna let this dry a little bit because i let my concealer air dry a little bit learned that from jackie ina because has better coverage so there's that my concealer has dried a little bit more to my liking so i'm gonna blend this out with the sigma concealer blend kabuki it's the f79 brush and then i'm just gonna you know pat it in while i answer this question how to heal with rumors and toxic friends i'm gonna start with rumors first because as a content creator there's always something or at least there was a point in my kind of career where there was always something going around my name um i feel like when it comes to rumors as long as you know what you have going on you should be fine if you know the truth and anybody who knows you personally should know your character and what you're up to so like i feel like you really shouldn't let stuff like that bother you because like i said as long as you know yourself and your character you should be good and as long as the people who you surround yourself with also understand you or your character you should be perfectly fine like there's no reason that you should be letting that bother you healing from them it's hard to see people tarnish your name and you really can't do anything about it on kind of like a bigger scale i see people talking down on stuff like i have going on all the time but like at the end of the day a lot of people don't know like my personal story or what goes on like behind the scenes but it's it is hard seeing people talk about you and you can't really defend yourself because you're low-key like feeding into it and i hate to say this but like it's very typical for people to say like in this sort of like advice but you really just have to learn to like ignore it because when you start feeding into it then it becomes entertainment for other people and then you're the local story of where we live and it's just not fun nor fair to be treated like that and i think everybody should just stay in the lane you know yourself you know your character people are always gonna talk but that's just something i feel like nobody can really completely give advice on because depending on the severity of the rumor like i can't really tell you how to heal because like i really don't know but the best thing i can say for you is to just ignore it don't give it any attention you know yourself and your character and i think that is more than enough to kind of hold you over and kind of avoid you doing stuff that you might regret in the public eye when it comes to toxic friends everybody in their life has dealt with one toxic friend that like they either can't get rid of or they'll always care about or the person has just went from being a not so good person to an absolutely even worse person and it's just so hard because I feel like when it comes to friendships people kind of underestimate how much love you might have for this person I'm quickly gonna take my damn beauty blender in the morphe jumbo continuous setting spray and just spritz this a little bit this is how I really get my concealer to melt into my skin I'm sorry for that little interlude, but I just thought I should tell you that. I feel like when people talk about toxic friendships, it's very hard because people underestimate how much love you might have for this person and all the good and potential you might see in that person. But what have I learned in my like one to three people that I've dealt with is that if somebody is showing you their true colors, that should be in itself enough for you to be like, okay, like fuck you like you know what i'm saying if you really just like are still struggling and be like yeah they might have did that bad thing but we were so good on this terms and whatnot make a list of everything they did that hurt your feelings made you feel bad and whenever you start 
thinking like okay maybe i should reach out like okay maybe they're not toxic they're probably just having like a bad day da, da, da. read that list and then tell me if you think that person is worth reaching out to again or keeping up a friendship with and you can also do that for breakup advice too because girl the amount of girls young women that dm me are like how'd you get over such and such relationship made a list of every time he made me feel bad and read it whenever i felt like i missed him got over him within a month it works every time i'm telling you when it comes to healing i really just think that you have to realize that their behaviors has nothing to do with you but what does have to do with you is how you deal with this situation from now on you really have to ask yourself like do i deserve to put up with their madness do i deserve to put up with their bs do i deserve to deal with their mean girl behavior like do i deserve to have somebody pick and choose when they want to be cool with me no you don't and in an order of self-care because that's what we're all doing currently if you really cared about yourself and your self-esteem you wouldn't be going back to this person because at the end of the day the person person who looks the most dumb is probably you. I hate to say it, but it's the truth. So that's a lot to say in that bit. <laughs> how to let go of emotional attachment. Uh, how to let go of emotional attachment. How to let go of emotional attachments with people who aren't good for you. I'm gonna contour my face. The Fenty Beauty Matchstick in Mocha 03. I take this a little bit higher on my cheekbones and go very, very, very light because this is kind of a dark shade for my skin tone when it comes to contour. So I just take it very high, almost like right under where you would put blush. I usually put my blush right on top of this, like later. But yeah, and then of course I hit the forehead a little bit darker because y'all know this forehead gotta get covered up and concealed sometime honey that's my little contour markings i'm also going to do my nose very lightly because i usually like to do my nose with a lot of bronzer i'm sorry i'm looking in the mirror right now i have to be able to look at my entire face when i contour because i need to know like did i hit this spot and then i also like to do yeah and that's my contour thing i'm gonna take this sigma large angled contour brush at 40 to blend this out and then we're gonna take a damn beauty blender again and blend it out some more but first the brush back to your question because i didn't forget it so when it comes to emotional attachments with people who aren't good for you once again i feel like this kind of goes hand in hand with the toxic relation or friendship sort of thing because at the end of the day you have an attachment to this person you have mad love for them and it's not your fault like you you care about them they probably were a big part of your life and if not you made them a big part of your life because you're just a naturally caring person most likely hence the reason you probably have an attachment and are struggling to heal and kind of distance yourself away from them but when it comes to just dealing with an emotional attachment with somebody who doesn't really want anything to do with you or a person who isn't good for you i'm gonna say this once and i'm gonna say it again if you really cared about yourself and your well-being you need to let this person go like one way or another it's hard because i have always been somebody who chases people friends and just everything and it's so easy to be so caring and loving towards people who don't give the same energy back and it's always like the same person over and over and over like you put this you put a certain amount of energy and it seems like you always care more than this person and it's just it's exhausting like chasing after them and trying to make them care and make them see like hey like i care about you and love you you know it's really exhausting but i feel like after a certain point this probably doesn't help but i'm being honest after a certain point one day it's honestly just going to click like with me personally um, in the past couple of years, I've always just had like one on and off friendship and within the past like six, seven months, it's just been like, what the fuck was I acting like that for? Like you deserve better than that. You're a great friend to everybody who's consistently friends with you and everybody who you ever claim to be friends with. You always take care of the people around you and you should be proud of that. And here I am about to be 20 and it's just like i have no type of remorse to this person or that person whoever i've dealt with in the past like anybody who's ever made me feel like that i have no remorse towards you but like i'm not putting up with your shit anymore and that's just how i personally like it just clicked for me honestly what to do when the guy you've been talking to stops reciprocating your energy I will say when a male stops reciprocating energy, they probably most likely have lost interest because 90% of the time, if they wanted to, they would. So if they stop reciprocating energy, just match 
project their energy and see how mad they get. It's actually quite comical. Once I'm going back to X's, I'm going to go in with my same beauty blender and I'm going to wet it up and blend this out like I mentioned before. I just thought I would reiterate in case you forgot, but yeah. When it comes to going back to X's, I'm a firm believer that like there's a wrong, like right person, wrong time. But when it comes to X's, it's like nine times out of ten, Babe, it ended for a reason, so why would you want to go back to that? I understand good memories, and yeah, you can still have mad love for these people and care about them depending on how it ended, but if you ended the first time, let's keep it that way unless there's like some deeper shit going on. You know what I'm saying? Because if it didn't work out one time, and unless the stars just happen to align and that's how it might feel, but unless you feel like a strong gravitational pull to this person, like a complete random, if somebody's your ex, just keep them that way. Because I've seen and experienced way too many times what it's like to keep trying to make shit work with one person. And it's just exhausting. It makes your mental health deteriorate and make you feel like you're not enough. And nobody de deserves to feel like that, like, in the end game. How can I keep the relationship alive with my partner? We live together. I guess you could say this is more of, like, an adult question. That's the whole reason I'm doing this, giving my adult advice, my teenage and young adult, you know, subscribers. But um, I feel like, also, I'm taking that wet beauty blender with this... Maybelline Fit Me Press Powder in 105 Ivory and blending that under my eyes so my concealer can set. I feel like when it comes to spicing up or keeping the flame in your relationship is honestly just finding new ways to have fun. After the honeymoon stage, a lot of people just kind of emotionally and mentally tap out of their relationship and that's why a lot of relationships, honest to God, fail because they don't have that, oh, we just got together and we're gonna be all over each other, like Travis, Courtney, Kardashian, like, you know, like, type of energy. <laughs> they think like that, and that's why a lot of relationships don't work together, but what I personally feel like and believe is that as long as you incorporate different kinds of fun outside of that bed, you should be fine. Start going on spontaneous trips or trying new foods or dressing up and using different accents like in public. Just do fun stuff together. Not everything has to be kept alive with like sex and whatnot, which is what a lot of people will tell you. And it's very exhausting because it don't matter how much sex you throw into a relationship, that is not going to keep it together. If things are unaligned, they're unaligned. If they're unbalanced, they're unbalanced. But just doing fun stuff together should definitely assist with that, if that makes any sense. I don't know if that makes sense. What to do if you feel insecure about your vag when it's your first time having sex? Because of the adult film type of industry, there's always been this kind of like standard for women and how they should be performing during sexual intercourse. And that sucks because girls these 16, 17, 15 years old thinking they have to be a star for their boyfriend. I feel like it's a normal thing to feel insecure about said body part. What you have to realize is that nobody is going to look like these people in these adult films. It's kind of hard, but you really do just have to realize like 99% of the people on the earth do not look like those people on the big adult film industry screens and premieres and stuff like that. So just realize that like your natural, your body is your body. It's pretty, it's beautiful no matter what it looks like. And don't let that one thing just like fuck it up for you, you know? Should I go into college single? I believe my boyfriend is the one, but we're going to different schools. I'm gonna go in with the Morphe 2 Wonder Tint Cheek and Lip Mousse and dream with the elf puffing buffing foundation brush relationships when it comes to college is so sticky because people are like you need to explore experiences what you like but like i said before you can find out what you like in a relationship you don't have to be single to find out certain stuff in a relationship if you feel like you're gonna be with this person for the rest of your life go for it i feel like the only thing that would get in your way is long distance because i hear long distance be whooping people's ass i personally have never done long distance i've always lived like within the same city as like the person i was talking to or the person who i was dating so i never had to deal with it on that front so i can't talk about like my experience with that i'm not gonna lie to you and say that i have but if you want to go into college single go into college single if you want to go into college in a relationship and experience parts of college with this person do that <laughs> like it's totally up to you don't let these grown folks tell you don't go into college in a relationship going into college in a relationship isn't as like complicated or like earth shattering as like people think you can still have your college fun while in a relationship you just have to remain respectful to your significant other and it's not hard because y'all can make shit work as long as you set your boundaries and talk about what one of the others comfortable with doing i feel like you should be able to live your life while also in a relationship 
relationship in college yes but living your life for everybody is a different definition so it really just depends on what you want to do in college if you want to sleep around then not don't go in. <laughs> if you want to experience college and just go with the emotions and party find a middle ground it's not that hard don't let these old ass people bully you on twitter into going in a relation like going into college in a relationship don't do that how do you address a relationship that you're in when you lost feelings it's very hard to talk about lost feelings in a relationship because it's something that's like not inevitable because people find their soulmates all the time and they never lose feelings but i feel like something that you should definitely bring up when you talk about this person definitely have a sit down conversation because sometimes you just don't have the spark of the honeymoon phases over and like that's normal the honeymoon phase being over i i do want to say not everybody has a spark in their relationship the entire time let's get rid of that narrative you can still completely love somebody but not have a spark is it cool to have a spark the whole time yeah but we need to get rid of like the narrative of like oh if you don't have a spark they're not the one girl but yeah i feel like you definitely need to have a sit down conversation don't try to pull the like it's not you it's me i definitely would try to talk it out before initially just breaking up because that is something that can be fixed i have talked to people where i personally have lost feelings and we talked it out we listed some things on make me feel better in the relationship as well as them as well and we fixed it from there sometimes the hardest like things to talk about um, are the things we need to talk about the most that's what my parents have always told me and i feel like losing feelings for somebody is one of the hardest things to talk about because it's like damn like am i a shitty person like da, 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 da. i'm taking my bronzer with this elf contouring brush and just like it on my nose it's like damn oh my gosh like am i doing something wrong they've been nothing but good to me why am i doing them like this da, 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 da. like i get it i've i've been there before i felt guilty for not having feelings for somebody but a lot of the time the hardest things can be like just fixed with the common conversation it's not rocket science is it annoying to have these conversations yes but is it very beneficial because you gain some social skills and communication skills while also getting across your point yes so it's one word for everybody but i would just let them know that it's not their fault like and just sit down and talk about the things that made you feel like this or just some kind of theories on why you feel like this on some things that you feel like could bring the spark back how do i deal with being alone how do you find the motivation to go to starbucks or the park i am going to talk about that as i put some bronzer on on my eye lids actually no i'm not gonna do that today i lied to you don't listen to me i'm actually gonna take this dry beauty sponge and take this pressed powder and i'm going to what is this called outline i don't know outline underscore my contour line just so they're a little bit cleaner i'm also gonna do the same thing on my nose now look like a crack and then i'm also going to go in with the benefit brow pencil and fill in my brows very lightly um, what I actually do is I go in and outline, wrong mirror, I go in and outline the bottom of my brow in the front, just like that, so I have more of like a solid base, and then fill any more like sparse areas on my brows that I may have, but before I do that, I'm going to spray my face really quick. I do notice that my makeup looks a lot better when I continuously use setting spray in my makeup routine. So I like to use it with like, what's gonna call it, blending with my sponge or just spraying throughout it. It really just goes interchangeably depending on the day. So as long as you use the setting powder, you should be good to go. But I'm assuming that you're asking more of like, kind of being comfortable doing stuff on your own. And the only thing that I can truly say about that is just go out and do it. I feel like because of COVID, a lot of people developed more social anxiety. Now we're in a time where like, we're kind of forced to being pushed right back into what life was before COVID. COVID while we're in totally different life stages like last time I was fully like when COVID broke out I was a senior in high school I turned 20 this year and I'm graduating next spring tell me that jump isn't crazy I need some water I'll be right back what was I saying oh yeah COVID ruined everybody's <laughs> social skills when covid was kind of dying down well i feel like covid never truly died down but it wasn't as severe 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 i started doing stuff on my own because i was at the time of my life where i was like okay i can't be waiting around for people to do things with me so i was just forcing myself to go out and do things by myself because i was just at the life point where i was like girl it's time like you're about to be 20 years old like it's time to start doing stuff by yourself because not everybody's gonna be around for you 24 7. so that's when i felt like it was time for me to kind of get on that independent shit 
you know how i personally just started doing it was honest to god starting on my college campus when you're in college i think people underestimate how much time you truly spend by yourself a lot of the time you're walking to classes you're in the library studying you might be getting lunch by yourself a lot of the time but either way you're alone a lot of the time this eyebrow looks really good it looks really filled in but it looks really good when my eyebrows look a little bit too filled in I actually take my beauty blender and blend out <laughs> the eyebrow because i never wanted to look too filled in Okay. Sometimes when my eyebrow looks too filled in, I'll just go into my beauty blender because I see it as like an eraser sometimes and I'll just go and redo it. So that's my little trick. And then I'll go in one more time with gel and just re-fluff it so it still has that bushy look and feel. That's my little eyebrow hack and sometimes I'll even brush it out with the gel so it looks a little bit more cohesive. But yeah, it looks a little bit crazy up close but... I think this looks good today. I spent a lot of time with myself in college just transitioning from classes and getting to class early by myself. I never had classes with any of my friends because totally different majors, different life goals, da, da, da. But what I really did to just realize that I can do things by myself was just go. <laughs> like I really just like started going to these things. And I think there's just like a common thing in this get ready with me that like I never really realize that i've just been doing in order to be my best self and that is just starting something ava jules has a podcast episode on the art of like just starting and going and getting what you want by just starting because that's always the hardest part but there really is no other advice except like a little harder because i am a bit older and i have a bit more um resources that help me get to and from these places and da 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 da, -da. just starting is the actual hardest part because one day i was just like hmm i'm tired of being like kind of lonely in my room and doing homework i'm gonna go to the library and do some work or i'm gonna go to starbucks and do some work and that's where it all just kind of started because i was tired of being alone like I'm, I was doing stuff and I still do stuff alone but I do it with other people which which makes me feel like I'm less alone and like I started doing this stuff in more secluded areas so like I started in the library and then I gradually moved to Starbucks and now I go to like the store by myself I go to the park by myself with cashew da -da 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 -da. and just like it kind of it kind of branched up from there I'm telling you this little eyebrow thing that I do goaded I don't know who I got that from. I think I just came with it by myself, but one of the best things I've ever done. Eyebrows should be sisters, cousins, and my eyebrows are definitely cousins because they're two totally different shapes, but I'm aware of that and I'm okay with that. If you ever feel like your eyebrows are too harsh, but you already gelled them down, babe, get your beauty blender and you're good to go. What's best for feminine hygiene? Any Aaliyah Simone hygiene routine. Yes, that is self promo and I'm telling you to go watch the video because I talk about it there. <laughs> How do you start getting into makeup? Like, what do you buy first? I actually started by raiding my mother's like makeup cabinet. I'm brushing off my little, I guess you can call it bake with this Sigma powder sweep F016. I actually started by just raiding my mother's makeup thing and she actually had a lot of bare minerals products. I had no idea what I was doing. I just color matched and I basically started with powder foundation. I will say always start with powders unless it's concealer. I feel like everybody the first thing they should buy is concealer. Let's knock that concealer routine out because everything falls behind that I fear. You could have a perfect face routine, contour routine. If you don't know the proper way to highlight your face, babe, no. I also feel like everybody should invest in a really good highlighter um, because I know we're in the age of doing this and doing this and effortless makeup looks I feel like are so flattering on everybody that's why it's kind of my go-to now so i just prefer that and honestly the less makeup you use in that kind of which we call it makeup routine the better it looks in my opinion so concealer mascara and highlighter how to make peace with an ex um i feel like i actually cannot answer that because lord knows i don't know how do you make friends in college love you love you too i appreciate you so much i'm going to take the fenty beauty duo highlighter and lightning dust in fire crystal and i'm gonna take this sigma high cheekbone highlighter fo3 and go ham with the highlighter i use both how to make friends in college i feel like literally everybody and their mother says this and y'all might hate me for saying it because you hear it everywhere but it's getting involved i don't know what else to tell you unless you want to struggle 
with your peers together i feel like that is a fun way to make just like good relations in your classes and whatnot that is so much highlighter oh my god i feel like struggling with your classmates is a good way to find people in your classes who you can at least talk to but when it, when it comes to like making friends you need to get involved personally when it comes to me like getting involved in making friends in college i put all that on one of my best friends ever he's actually the one that introduced me to a lot of people that i claim as one of my friends now because he's very involved in school stuff without him being involved i don't know what i would be doing when it comes to friend relations but if you're not the biggest on getting involved find a friend that's big on getting involved because if they're gonna do anything they're gonna drag you through those events so thank you ever for that i appreciate you so much not letting others define how you see yourself friends family boys slash girlfriends or significant others this kind of goes back to my original question from like way 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 at the beginning of the video i feel like if you know who you are and know who you are value wise and just personality wise like nobody's opinions outward opinions should affect that because you know who you are better than anybody no matter what anybody says so nobody's words and actions should affect who you are if that makes sense getting over a situationship while you're in a great relationship already i feel like in order to do this you really shouldn't be in a relationship in the first place it's not fair to them this is a pickle for you to still be stuck on somebody while you're in a whole like you said great relationship so i think we should start there but i definitely just feel like if you don't want to take it that far you definitely should just realize like that's not happening you have a person who loves you and if you're so stuck on them go be in your situation i just feel like it's not fair that like you know you should do that to somebody like still be stuck on somebody while you get with somebody no don't do that what birth control to start with this my first time birth control is such a sticky subject right now as a woman because everybody wants to take our rights away but i digress i'm actually gonna go in with the maybelline sky high mascara it's the waterproof one on my top and bottom lashes i feel like i can't really tell you what birth control is the best to start out with just depending on your needs and your lifestyle you should pick based on that me personally i'm on the pill I and mean, that's the one that you take at the same time every single day three weeks of hormonal pills and then a week of non-hormonal pills for my period i go through planned parenthood i love planned parenthood they make getting birth control so easy love them to death girl bosses they make everything from birth control std testing portion so accessible so definitely check out planned parenthood if you have the ability to and if there's one in your area because i know they're not everywhere i really just would say pick out one based on your lifestyle i picked the pill just because it was the most efficient for me because i usually have a solid routine where i take that in my routine every day so it really just helped me out and me personally i feel like that was the one that i would benefit from the most because of like the convenience of it i can take my little packet everywhere da -da -da -da. some people like the shot because they don't like going to the doctor and deal with prescriptions some people get the iud because they just say fuck them kids and they don't want to deal with it for five years and then um some people get the implant because they also don't want to take the thing okay and some people get the patch because they want to switch it out every week some people don't want a visible sticker in the summertime so they get the pill or the sh like it really just depends on like what you prefer but just be aware of the side effects for all of them and make sure you're actually talking to your doctor about what you're putting in your body always because birth control does affect your hormones so just beware of that if you're going on it if the guy you're dating says he isn't mentally ready for a relationship how long is too long to wait for him you just answered your question you shouldn't be waiting for nobody don't ever wait hand and foot on nobody because then they're gonna think they can push you around and i'm not raising people who think they can be pushed around and wait on folks no you're not waiting for nobody nobody he made it clear that he doesn't want you. When people say they don't want a relationship, they don't want you. Because if they wanted to be with you, they would in a heartbeat. No, we're not doing that. You're not waiting. Mm -mm. How to not be a people pleaser and stand your ground. This is the last question. Whoo, girly pop, you came to the right girl because boy, have I used to let myself get walked over. I think after a certain point in your life, that thing that I said just like clicked earlier, it clicks again. And you're like, I don't deserve this shit. <laughs> like every time something bad or like somebody does you wrong, every time that they do something bad to you, ask yourself, do I deserve this? 
And if you say no, you need to tell them, hey, cut this out. You're being a dickhead. I'm not putting up with this anymore, this, that, and the third, because you're not. You're not putting up with that. I'm so tired of seeing people let themselves get pushed around because nobody deserves to be treated like lesser than an equal by anybody. And that can start within your personal friendships, family relationships. I know it's harder with family because it's like family. But as soon as you just start asking yourself, do you deserve this? And if you say no, you need to tell them, I'm not putting up with this anymore. I actually really don't like the way that you're treating me. I wish you would stop. And if you don't stop, you will not see me in your life anymore. Fix it or get gone. Simple. My entire face is actually done, so I'm gonna set my face again with the Jumbo Mist Setting Mist with the Continuous <laughs> Setting Mist from Morphe. I do a really light coat of that at the end of my makeup routine because I already have so much on. It's really not like needed that I should have a lot. I think I'm gonna put on these lashes today. People were asking what these lashes were from my hygiene routine video and my like decorating my apartment video, but I Forgot where I got these from. Um, actually, they weren't in a box when I picked them up a couple weeks ago to wear them, so I'm sorry. They're really good lashes, though. They're some of my favorites. I do need to trim them, though, because they do bother my eyes a little bit in the middle or near my inner corner. Okay, I'm just ripping the glue off because if you be wearing lashes with all that excess old glue, take off all the glue you can. We can see it. It looks nasty. Clean it up. So I'm gonna go trim these lashes, apply them, and I will get back to you guys in a little bit. Put my hat back on because it's actually a part of my outfit for today. Here is the final makeup look. My eye bags are gone for right now, but as the day goes on, they usually come back. But because I use Tarte Shape Tape, they usually last a while when it comes to my eye bags. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, let me know if you guys want any more like kind of girl talk, get ready with me, just because I feel like it's very fun, a very interactive way so you guys can just talk to me without all the very much set up overly production. 2017 through 19 Aaliyah, we don't need her to return. <laughs> like this is a fair bounce to where I can still do my girl talk talks but also keep it kind of adult and just advice driven instead of just facts 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 which is what it was before but let me know what you guys are into and what you want to see from me so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you're new here please subscribe i'd love to have you be a part of the family recently hit 645k so thank you i appreciate you more than anything i love you all the most and i will see you guys on sunday with a new one stay cool have a great rest of your morning evening or night wherever you are in the world that was a throwback but i will see you guys in the next video bye everybody mm -hmm.